we manifest what we think. You know, we create our own environment by the way we think. If you're going to have a good day, you can have be rear-ended. You could have a flat tire and still go home and have a say, I had a good day. I had a couple bumps today, but I had a good day because your frame of mind was, I'm going to have a good day today. There's a false notion in our society. I'll take care of you if you take care of me. But the truth is, if we actually take care of ourselves first, only then can we change our life, change our homes, change our cities, our relationships, and eventually change the world. For those of you who appreciate the holistic lifestyle, you've come to the right place. Your host, Emmanuel Zavallos, is a certified emotion and body code practitioner and certified group energy facilitator. You are now listening to Healing the Healer podcast. This show is brought to you by Heal, the social media platform for those who love the holistic lifestyle. Are you tired of sharing holistic tips and getting banned or going to Facebook jail for sharing the truth? Are you tired of all the Facebook political drama? Tired of people who don't support energy healing growth? My wife Jess and I created a social media platform that was meant for people who love social media, communicating with like-minded people, and love learning hacks from other wellness practitioners. It's free to join www.haveempathyandlove.com. Plus, every week you have the option and choice to opt into a cutting-edge healing group where you get energy healing for seven days straight. Again, it's free to join www.haveempathyandlove.com. All right, welcome everyone. I am so grateful uh, today. We have a very special guest. Uh, we have Lauren Swenson here. And um, there's just some really amazing people uh, that are just doing amazing things in this world. And I want to tell you a little bit about him. I want to give a proper introduction so you know who he is and what he's done. Um, so 40 years ago, Lauren Swenson and his wife adopted a son with cerebral palsy. As her son grew, Lauren and his wife traveled the world looking for answers to improve his quality of life. Lauren met several doctors developing new neuropathic treatments, and the treatments were incredibly helpful and life-changing for their son. This started Lauren's journey with frequency-based treatment. In 2008, while at China at a trade show, Lauren came across a digital body scan that used a large transducer headset. He was so impressed with the technology that he acquired the rights to bring it to the United States. Over the next few years, Lauren and his team created the first AO scan in 2012. The first AO scanners were large and costly, designed for patient visits. In a stroke of brilliance, Lauren developed AO scan technology in mobile form to make it accessible to everyone. So I just want to welcome you here to uh, Healing the Healer podcast. Welcome. Thank you. All right. So I like to always start off with, first of all, um, maybe you can share three things that you're grateful for. That's a good way to kind of just start the environment uh, that we're in right now. Okay. What am I grateful for? One, I'm grateful to be alive at a time when it's like inspiration is coming in floods to so many people throughout the world. Um, I'm grateful uh, for, obviously, <clears throat> my family, my wife, my children. And I'm grateful to to be able to be in the now and to be with people who are focused on something other than themselves, something that's bigger than themselves. Because we've come from a couple decades of it was just everything about me. And now we're starting to see people change that. And you're starting to see, and it's at a time, it couldn't come at a, at a better time when things are so divided. So That's awesome. Uh, thank you for sharing those. Um, I remember uh, there's a really cool quote by John Muth. He said something like, uh, remember that there's only one important time and that time is now. The most important one is always the one you are with. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing to do is do good for the one standing at your side. This so is true. why we're here. So true. And so I, I, I want to kind of bring it back to you because um, – I, uh, I remember seeing like either a cartoon or some type of video where they were taught, they were showing superheroes and uh, basically like if the, if this tragedy didn't happen to them, that um, they wouldn't be a superhero, you know, yeah. that, that through tragedy came their mission and call. True. And so, um, so when I was looking at your, your bio and I was like, okay, so when you adopted your son, he had cerebral palsy, 
Um, take me through more of the the journey from your side because you know a biography only kind of tells you the outside of this this step this step this step. But really, when you looked at your son, did you like how did it all start? Were you like okay? I need to take you here, but maybe this isn't good enough. I need to create this. Like, what was your thought process on the whole journey of it? Well, in the beginning, when we when we first received Michael, he was only nine months old, and it was just it was delightful. It was a bundle of joy. The cere- the cerebral palsy things didn't really start to show up till he hit about two or three years old. So it was just like a normal infant. I mean, there were little things that you could see the way he held his hands and his arms and stuff. But as far as really seeing the magnitude of the cerebral palsy, that came a few years later. And it wasn't until he hit about four years old and we started to notice that his walk, his gait was getting worse. He would he would walk with his arms above his head. Uh, he kind of bounce off the walls as he was going down the hall. And we knew at that point he would be in a wheelchair within the next couple of years if we didn't do something. Now, we had been told when we first adopted Michael that he would be a homebound child his whole life because his his cerebral palsy would get worse and worse and worse. And we were starting to see that even as early as two and three and four years old. So I had been introduced to a uh, a doctor. Well, he wasn't even a doctor. It was a a medicine type guy in Tijuana, Mexico that was working with doctors down there. And we were told you ought to take Michael down and see Jimmy. And uh, we go down there and Jimmy's got long hair. You know what I mean, <laughs> and he dressed pretty rugged and his clinic was uh, in a place where you wouldn't even want to go. It was pretty sketchy. And we went in and his whole staff were the kindest people in the world and he sat down in his chair and he pulled his hair back and this whole side of his face had been eaten away with cancer. And that's why he had long straggly hair was to hide his face. But he had cured his cancer working with all of these, at that time, you know, considered way alternative medicine. And so he, we worked with, he was our first person to, that we started working with Michael. And we did some injections and we saw some things change, but not a whole lot, but enough to whet our appetite that there is something out there. And so from that, we ended up going to Germany, and we met some people there. We went to England. We went to Korea. We went to Japan. Later, we went to China. And in all these places, we were introduced to either therapists or technologies or therapies that had some piece of the puzzle that Michael needed. But about... uh, in that four, it was about a four-year journey. I came to know three really important people for Michael, and that was Dr. Margaret Patterson, a neurosurgeon out of Aberdeen, Scotland, and she had been working with the U.S. government during the Vietnam War and helping the uh, soldiers overcome addictions and pain, you know, from their injuries. And she was doing it. She was working with a, a medical or a Chinese medicine doctor that was doing acupuncture. And he was putting needles right behind the ear of um, the soldiers that were either addicted to morphine or addicted to heroin or something. Um, and he was getting some pretty good results. Well, she had been working with very crude electrical frequencies. And she says, well, Dr. Wu, why don't we hook two clips to those needles and see if there's any difference? Well, it was magical. All of a sudden, within days, there was no more cravings for the addiction. Those who were on medicine for pain, the pain was was greatly reduced. Within 10 to 20 days, there was no more addiction and the pain was tolerable with an aspirin. So that led her on her journey. Now, this was back in the late 60s, early 70s. I didn't come to meet her until uh, the mid-80s. And so she had actually refined it to a a much more refined frequency. She had a a specific frequency and amplitude for heroin and one for meth and one for uh, morphine and all these different drugs. She had got it down. In fact, she's well known, and now she's she's passed now, but Mick Jagger, uh, Keith Richards, uh, Ted Nugent, Boy George all owe their lives to her because she is the one that went in 
and got them off their addictions. It's and amazing. In, in all of their books. She, Saved they, rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> this is so true. Uh, but they all credit their, their life to Margaret Patterson and her little black box is what they referred to it. Wow. So that was the piece of the puzzle for me. Well, if you can do that with addictions, that means you're reprogramming the brain. Well, maybe we can do that with Michael. And so she became a key player in what we, we started to do with Michael. I then, then met Dr. David Clark at the Ohio State University of Medicine, and he was working at that time with Down syndrome. Now, to let you know, two years after we adopted Michael, we adopted Lisa, and she had Downs. And so this was an interest. Now, I met him because of Lisa, not for Michael. Yeah. But what he was doing is he had um, he had felt like the brain, things that uh, Down syndrome and even cerebral palsy uh, – uh, people had was a disconnect in the brain and he found that a lot of times it was because an underdeveloped inner ear so he mm. was spinning them so a nurse would sit in a chair that he had put a motor to she was blindfolded but the, they would hold these infants and they would spin for 21 days or well they would spin for 30 minutes for 21 consecutive days. So that was Saturday and Sunday. So 21 uninterrupted days. And the results he was getting with these Down syndrome babies was remarkable. In fact, some of them, 12 years later, you couldn't tell that they were ever Downs. And that's see, incredible. that that's an amazing thing because that's a chromosomal issue. Right. So we, we still don't understand how our brain really works and why our body works the way it does. So that was important because now, even though we went to him for Lisa... Here's another piece of the puzzle for Michael, the, the inner ear. Mm -hmm. The last one was Dr. Lauren, uh, um, Dr. Persinger at Laurenton University in Toronto, Canada. And he was stimulating the brain through light, magnets uh, on the head, and sound. And uh, there's lots of light and sound devices on the market uh, and magnetic devices on the market. But what he had developed was truly uh, therapeutic applications where the stimulation with the light and the sound was being directed by the frequencies in your brain. So it was, it was an interactive thing, right? not something you just put on and, and So and everyone enjoyed. was different. And be Everybody was different. Correct. Yeah. All right. So that's how, and, and this, this whole journey took about four years for me. Uh, so Michael was about seven, approaching eight. And one night, 3 o'clock in the morning, around 3 o'clock in the morning, I woke up. And I went over and sat down at my table, and I drew what looked like a coffin sitting on top of a pyramid and arrows showing circular motion, and I went back to bed. And the next morning, I woke up, and I'm looking at this drawing and thinking, what in the world was I thinking, you know? And as it started to come back to me, I realized I needed a box that could spin, and inside the box, we would do all the stuff from Margaret Patterson and from... Dr. Persinger, we started to build the box, and we built this very crude, it looked like a coffin, uh, on a base that would spin. Now, the spin was important. It was 12.7 revolutions per minute. That's what Dr. Clark had determined. The frequencies uh, for the electrical to the brain were very specific, and those were things that uh, Dr. Patterson and, and then my research on top of hers we came up with something because she hadn't worked with Parkinson's or with uh, cerebral palsy. She'd been working with addiction and pain. And so I modified those. And then with the light and sound, and we spun Michael in the, in our living room in this makeshift uh, spinning bed for 21 days. At the end of 21 days, there was a slight change in his gait and he seemed to have a little bit more balance but we only did it the, the 21 days. We didn't do another one. We didn't do, we didn't follow it up. We f didn't follow it up for years, maybe mm -hmm. 20 years before he ever did it again. But over the course of this next six months, Michael's gait and balance started to improve. And by the, um, so this was in July, June, July. By Christmas, he was able to be mainstreamed into a normal school instead of a handicapped school. That's incredible. Yeah, it was remarkable. I mean, the time too, it's just so, so quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for sharing that. Cause I, I know, for example, uh, these things that have happened to you, um, you know, in regards to your, your children, you know, mm -hmm. um, I know they influence your day-to-day -day life. I mean, I know like you're still probably computing different things of like, how can I 
basically, it's almost like relieving suffering. I know, I know. For example, Tony Robbins said that you know he he ever because he dealt with so much suffering in his life, yeah. he wanted to end world suffering. You yep. know, so there there is something kind of like whatever you you know wherever you come from, wherever is your home base, it's like you want to just exude that out into the market so and help true. people out. Um, but I wanted to ask you real quick. Um, um, what what am, so since since then how old is he right now by the way Michael just turned 40 just one, 41 Michael is a second degree black belt he's a massage licensed massage therapist and an accountant Michael lives as normal of a life as anybody else uh, now some of the things um, emotionally Michael still uh, delayed mm -hmm. but as far as all this you would never know Michael had ever had that issue when he was born. Right. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, and I got to meet him just for a yeah. little bit. Yeah, he's a really great guy. I did not know about the black belt, though. That's pretty yeah. – uh, <laughs> got to make sure I don't mess with him. Um, yeah. So what um, – if, if someone came to you and asked you – because I know right now the, the big thing that – I feel because I've experienced this for myself, this um, AO scan technology. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I love being a skeptic. I love, like, you know, testing it out, like prodding it, throwing wrenches at it. And just because then I want to have, like, a testimonial for myself, you know. Right. And that's the only way you can do it. You have to kind of, like, you know, check all the angles, you know, and kind of come in as an unbiased person, you know. Um, but I really feel like everyone in their home needs one of these, you know, and I, and I think it's like, I think that's where, where you're headed is where I really believe that um, this isn't something, it's almost like giving the power back to the people. And I feel like in this age right now, I was just talking to, to Dr. Bradley Nelson the other time, and I was in, I was talking about how I feel like people are more open to this type of work and this type of technology due to the fact that the baby boomers and people of, who have kind of like, they went the Western route and they they did the Band-Aids and, right. and, and they're just sick and tired of being sick and tired. That's right. And so, and so I feel like more than ever, you might tell someone 50 years ago, I'm sending frequencies to you and they'll send you to the loony bin. That's right. But, but now I feel like more than ever, they're just like, we're their last rope here. And if this doesn't work, we don't know where to go. And so I'm just curious, like, I know it's, you've probably witnessed this in your own, um, you know, work is that how much more open are people now to this type of technology? I mean, have you seen like a shift in the last 20 years where maybe the world is awakening to this type of work or what's your opinion on that? Okay. So here's what I've seen. It used to be um, in the nineties when that's when I was really pushing the, the alternative health, alternative medicine was the last resort for people. It was after they'd been cut, burned, and poisoned. They'd done everything else mm -hmm. the Western medicine had said that they should do, and they weren't any better. And so that's mm -hmm. when they came to people like us that were doing these other more holopathic or, or more natural ways. And we didn't have a whole lot to work with. The immune systems were shot. Their bodies were down. And we still had success, not immense success, but 30, 35% would turn around, which is pretty remarkable. Now, today, a lot of people, this is their first step. Mm -hmm. And that's the change that I've seen. And it's an amazing change because really, if you think about it, what we have here and here, the, the body that, that God has given us, it has all the answers. And if it's just given the right nutrition, the right uh, guidance, the right information, and a lot of it, most of it, it can pretty much take care of on its own. That is what's remarkable is seeing people come to this awakening, to this this realization that, hey, I can, I, I have to be responsible for this. I have to be the one that makes that decision to get better. Mm -hmm. so that, that's great you mentioned that because I also think too is um, you know science is based on the five senses you know mm -hmm. and, and so. I think that it's a very, if you think about it, science can be very limiting because what you can't see, you can't um, officially write down on a white paper and say this, you know, but I feel like um, my mother was an oncologist, uh, hematologist, and she also was into natural medicine as well. Um, she graduated in the top 5% of UCLA Medical School. And uh, so I was telling my dad, I'm like, she's a little bit smarter than you. That's why I think she went into natural medicine, you know. Um, but what's interesting is that she said something very powerful, and maybe you can talk about this. Um, she said that whenever you cure, let's say, a, a cancer patient doesn't have cancer anymore, and she worked at Kaiser, um, she says it's important to know that they don't go back 
to what caused them the cancer in the first place. Absolutely. And so she was kind of, um, she'd be at nighttime, like t- checking out the acidity of their pH of their urine samples and, and just wondering what their diet was, what's their relationship at home, because she was nervous. She says, I don't want them to go back. And then they, they relapse and come back to me. That's right. And so one of the things that impressed me about the um, AO scan machine, why don't we just do this first before everyone just kind of gets blown out of the water, is what is the AO scan? But then let, let's go to what is the inner voice right afterwards. Maybe you can kind of share your uh, thoughts on that. Okay, so the AO scan, um, let's just real back, go back real quick. I was introduced to it. It's Russian technology that came out in the, the late 80s, early 90s. It was developed by the Russians for working with their cosmonauts in the space station. How did they monitor their health? How did they help them when they were away for you know six months? And they found that if they put frequencies to the brain through transducers, that the brain would respond. It was just like, I'm asking you, how are you? And you're going to respond, fine, or whatever. Right. Same way with the brain. You put a frequency in, they say, oh, that's the left, that's the left ventricle of the heart. Here's the vibration of the left ventricle of the heart. Well, then they would measure that vibration uh, on a scale. We know that a healthy left ventricle should be vibrating at this range. Well, if it's vibrating faster, we know it's under stress. If it's vibrating slower, we know that it's been retarded for some reason. It's not functioning properly. And so that was the first thing. That's major. And so over, I don't know how many years, they documented 119,000 different frequencies in the body that responded to very specific cells or organs or tissue, and they were able to find it. So they put the introduced the frequency, the body would respond, and they would do its analysis. Well, then they realized, well, if we can, if the body will respond and tell us what it is, maybe we can give it a frequency back to help it move back into homeostasis. And they started doing that. And more than 60% of the time, it went back into homeostasis. Not 100%. But more than more than placebo, anything over fifty two percent is not placebo. Correct. So that's where it started. I got introduced to this, my wife and I, uh, at a medical convention that you referred to in Guangzhou, China, and we went and we sat down and they put these things on our head. These they're about the size of playing cards, a deck of playing cards on either temple, and they would put the symbols. Within twenty minutes, he told me I had issues with my prostate i had issues with my liver i had issues with all these things and then my wife sits down he tells her all the issues that she has and we knew these things some of them we didn't know about but the ones we did know about made us pretty convinced that the ones we didn't know about were probably true too and then he did the optimization where they are where they put the healthy frequencies in all right so we were blown away they validated things that we knew about ourselves by just putting those things on our head. So now we didn't have a question about the technology. And I have to say, I was already open to frequencies at this time. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't a big step for me. But uh, at that moment, we realized this is something. And so we negotiated with this company for almost six months to bring that technology here. Well, it was a $32,000 machine. So it wasn't something you could go into homes. So it was being sold to doctors and mostly chiropractors at that time. Because doctors still, this was this was a little bit too much in the voodoo realm. Right. But for energy doctors and chiropractors, this was pretty important. About three years ago, we thought about, now there's a part of the scanner, which you refer to, that we call the inner voice. That deals with our emotions. And... I'm a firm believer that if you don't deal with the emotions, and I know that you share this same view, and so does Dr. Bradley, if we don't take care of the emotions, we're not going to take care of ultimately the physical. Mm -hmm. We've got to deal with the emotions. So we brought all these different pieces together and put it in. I thought, what if we could make it to where people could at least monitor their emotions at home? And, and deal with that much at home. And then they don't have to come in to see the doctor as much on the big scan. They don't spend so much money. That's how the AO scan mobile came into being. It was originally going to be just the inner voice, which we'll do a little demo in a minute, where they just pick it up, push a button, talk for 10 seconds, and it isolates four uh, emotions that are causing issues with the body. And then it gives you frequencies to play back that help balance those emotions back out. 
Well, as by the time we had got the intervoice to work on this mobile platform, we realized, well, we might be able to add more of the scanner to this. And so a year later, two years ago this month, or August uh, this month, we introduced the AOScan Mobile, and it had the inner voice and it had parts of the other scanner, and it's just continued to evolve from there. So that's the AO scanner. Yeah, and, and it's interesting because um, <clears throat> it's one of the things that kind of validates it for me is that it's not an easy investment for some chiropractor to say, let me just drop down $32,000. No. I mean, you would have to – that's a very – they probably dissected it left and right probably tried it on themselves and things like that. And then they finally bought it. So for me, that was already one source of validation for me because again, I'm just a skeptic, you know? Um, but what's interesting is um, what I was talking about is that that maintenance is that I feel like people are emotionally not maintaining themselves. Um, I feel right. like we wake up and then we get chased by a lion the whole entire day. Our stressors are really high. Our cortisol is high. And then we don't know what to do with ourselves. And, and really what's happening is that your right. body starts breaking down because, yeah and so that's what for me caught my attention i was like what do people do to truly emotionally stabilize themselves on a daily basis that takes less than 15 minutes um maybe you can talk about wh where did this idea come from where the voice actually brings out two th you can uh, uh, get basically two thousand frequencies from the voice that's a pretty interesting kind of thing um, so the inner voice <clears throat> I have to give credit where credit's due, and that actually goes back to a gentleman out of uh, Madrid, Spain, by the name of Roberto uh, Forcine. And he, now, the technology goes way back into the ancient times where we, you know, music, we've always known that music or sounds or drums or vibrations uh, had healing effects. Well, he was the first one that I know of that actually wrote a program that could recapture your voice and then to show you the frequencies that were out of range. So we're looking at the the notes, the, the 12 main notes in our voice, and we're looking at, so it's one octave, and we're looking at 12,000 plus frequencies over those 12 notes. And we're looking for the, the four that are the furthest out of range. So it, immediately within the first two seconds, it takes a baseline of your voice. And then the next two seconds, it shows us, okay, here's the ones way high and here's the ones way low. Now, we really only need maybe four to five seconds to capture what we need. But because people don't know what to say, oh, well, what should I say? You know, well, maybe I'll say. And so we want to capture enough to where we've got enough of their voice. But really, we only need four or five seconds. So we record uh, 10 seconds. That way we know that in that 10-second sample, we've got enough. And then it, it does its uh, algorithms and tells us, okay, these are the three highest and this is the one lowest. And what we have found is that the one at the, the lowest, the one that has the lowest intensity, is generally the emotion that we bury, that we don't want to confront, we don't want to deal with it, we don't want anybody to know about it. And that's always the one that is the biggest uh, detriment to our health. There's a book out there, Feelings Buried Alive Never mm -hmm. Die, yeah, and that's a great book. Um, and, I th and in my opinion, it's very true. If we don't deal with it, then it becomes a cancer of, so to speak, in mm -hmm. our body, or at least in our emotions. So that's what the inner voice does. It captures those frequencies, shows us what they are, and then it gives us a three-minute uh, piece of music that has a balancing frequency in there behind the music. Mm -hmm. And you listen to that, and it kind of helps nudge those emotions to the surface. It doesn't make the emotions go away. It actually brings them to the surface. I've seen, um, I've seen grown men break down in tears and just sob. One in particular, he did his inner voice, and it came up. And as he started doing his uh, his optimization frequencies, he just started to cry. He it was uncontrollable. For forty five minutes, he was in a corner, literally sitting in the corner, in fetal position, sobbing. I never asked him what it was, but whatever that emotion was, it came to the surface. Um, he dealt with it. And now this is almost uh, seven years later. He's His health is better. His blood pressure is better. All of these things changed, but it was because of an emotion. And I don't even know if he was aware that it was buried, mm. but it came forward. 
He was able to see it. And most of the times, the things that we're afraid of, when we actually get face to face with it, it's not as bad as we thought. And I think that's what happened with him. It, he was able to deal with it, fix it, and move on. I love the inner voice. I do the inner voice at least once every day, and some days as many as three times. For me, it's important because, and I'm sure, Emmanuel, for you too, our days are so busy and so hectic, and we deal with so many people. Yeah. We can't help but absorb some of that energy as well. Absolutely. So to <laughs> Too become, much, I would say. Yeah. So to be able to sit down and let that... Um, let ourselves take care of those emotions and, and get them out of our way it is important. So I know you probably wondered why is it called healing the healer? Uh, it probably came to your mind, but the reason why is because I feel like healers themselves are too busy healing other people that they don't take care of themselves. They're the plumbers with the leaky pipes. Exactly. And yeah. uh, I mean, unfortunately, you know, my, my mother passed away in 2011 with pancreatic cancer, ironically, wow. because, you know, she was a cancer doctor. And it just, it just reminded me of like, I wonder if she really took care of herself because she was just somebody who was just a giver and a giver. And sometimes the giving stops and you have nothing else to give and now your health is just declining. That's right. And so, um, but again, what's interesting is that in my work that I do, um, you know, there's these things called these energetic cords between people. Mm -hmm. And um, I think when I first started my practice, it's really interesting is that they would say, if you want a relationship to thrive, connect someone heart to heart, because those are where the positive emotions so come true. from, right? Mm -hmm. But then, you know, um, over time, let's say a very toxic relationship would be a gut to gut cord, right? Mm -hmm. And so then for four or five years, I was taught, like, put a heart to heart, create, like, remove that cord and put a new heart to heart cord. And then, um, but then later on, like in the last year or so, they're like, it's better to have no cords. And the reason why is because they say that other people are so up and down emotionally that you don't know if the cords are being, are moving from time to time and right. causing you harm. So that's why I was like, if there's a way that you can emotionally stabilize yourself, I think more people would be happier in life, you know, oh, and, yeah. feel, and be more balanced, but they don't know where to go. And um, I also feel like they they think it's harder than it is. I think humans hate simplicity in, in many many ways. They don't, if it's too simple, it can't be that it can't, simple. It can't work. Yeah, yeah. We, we want the complex answer, right? That's right. Um, but sometimes it is simple. Just let it be, you know. Yeah. Um, but I've used the inner voice scan, and I when I read uh, the good book or scriptures, I'm listening to in the background, and then I leave the lower note on for a very long time, and just kind of keep playing the lower note, just kind of mm -hmm. you know. So, yeah. and for me, it sets up my day for success. You know, I think it's and, wonderful. Uh, yeah, and so I just I'm very grateful that you guys you know were able to kind of create that. Um, so for someone who's into, um, let's say. Um, you're like, I'm, I want to be a very um, healthy person. Like this is the year where I kind of right. really get my wellness into work here. And you just said, here's the AO scan. Or what's a, what's kind of like a, a major highlight of your like, this is something, this is where I would first go. And then maybe this is the, the second thing I would do. Like where, where would you start somebody if they want to, like, you know, I haven't been taking care of my health. My emotions are all over the place. My, my health is not that great and whatever. I just bought an AO scan. What, what do I need to do first to kind of like really start my journey? I, I think that's a great question. <clears throat> and it's an easy one to answer. Inner voice is always first. Deal with the emotions. And, and what's interesting is when I show someone the, the scanner for the first time, I'll have them do their inner voice. And up, they'll speak for 10 seconds. And the first time they do it, they feel silly and they can't, they don't. And say, so, are you okay with that voice? You want to do it again? And I make <laughs> okay. sure that they're comfortable because I don't care how many times they do it. They can even try to, try to talk like Darth Vader. I got what I needed <laughs> from the vocal cords. Right. Um, and then I show them what comes up. And one of those four frequencies will strike a chord every single time. And then I explain to them because on inner voice um, – It'll give you a spectrum, okay? Um, and then they're generally never either either end of that spectrum. They're just not in the middle. And that's where we need to be because it's balance. We have to have bad to recognize the good. Mm -hmm. We have to have the opposites, mm -hmm. but we need to be in the middle. We need to be balanced with, it, with that. And Eastern medicine is really big on balance. Mm -hmm. So once they see that, and I explain to them, you're not angry, but you're having a hard time with change. And so they'll say, yeah, or whatever the, the, that uh, balance or that spectrum is. 
And then I say, now I want you to just listen to these pieces of music. It's going to take 12 minutes. Put the headphones on. And remember, they always have to have their headphones. And you give them 12 minutes to listen. And you watch. And you'll sometimes see a tear. or Sometimes you'll see a smile. And then when you get up, you say, how do you feel? And almost inevitably, I feel better. Okay, because all we did now was talk about your emotions. Let's take a look at your chemistry, and then I'll go right into the vitals. And then from the vitals, we'll take a look at the comprehensive. And when you do that, now the emotions are a little intangible. It's a little hard for them. They, they know things aren't right. But when you start to show them their chemistry, and you start to show them, okay, you got an issue with your heart, you got an issue with your muscle, or your knee, or something, um, now you've got their attention, because that's something that they can, like you said, Touch and see and smell and taste. Right. And now they may not understand it, but they know that, okay, it. There's a correlation there. They, yeah, it, it worked. Right. And, and what's interesting too is um, I sometimes do that as well. Like whenever I see, um, if I see like a chart of emotions and then what organ or gland produces them, if they're having liver issues, I just say, um, is there a lot of anger, bitterness, guilt, yeah, hatred, yeah, resentment in your so life? Good, and yes. they always go, yeah, yeah, there is. I'm like, well, if you keep doing that, that <laughs> liver is going down. Yeah. So, um, and then if you're drinking alcohol, then you're making that liver fatty and making it worse, That's you right. know? And um, so I tell people, like, be careful with the caffeine and the, and the, and the alcohol because then um, you probably readily feel these emotions, you yeah. know? So what you take too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but, um, but yeah, I was, I was kind of curious, um, now that you brought it up yourself, you brought up the, the vitals and things like that. I am still mind blown that I went to your office in uh, Provo area mm -hmm. and um, I saw the actual huge machine and I saw like, I think I saw like the back of an eyeball and like kind of like, and then all these little numbers there. And I was just like, tell me that's not real. Cause that I've never seen a more descriptive numeric uh, sort of tables on top of our, our human system. Like it just, it was like layer after layer after layer. I mean, it is really impressive on a huge screen right. but what you're trying to do which is mind-blowing is you're putting it on a phone so people have literally that same access so tell me like what is a vital scan what's the difference between a vital scan a full body scan why would somebody want to do that and then how frequently can you get one of those type okay. of scans so with your handheld scanner uh, you've got several modules and we'll just call them modules you have the inner voice then you have vitals then you have in, uh, comprehensive, and then you have a CEPHI. And we'll talk about each one of those. But your inner voice is we're dealing with your emotions. We get that from your voice. Mm -hmm. The next two, vitals and comprehensive, the vitals is looking more at your chemistry, uh, your food sensitivities, your toxicities, um, much like you'd get from a blood work or a urine sample or a stool sample. It's that type of information. And it gives it the information to you on a scale. You mentioned numbers. It's a scale of one to nine. Five is meaning you're in balance. You're in homeostasis. If you see a number on any one of the issues that come up, and it's over a thousand now that we're, we scan in the vitals, all the way up to nine, that means it's under stress or it's inflamed. And if it's four, three, two, one, then it's it's not functioning. It's it's lethargic. It's not doing its job. Right. So that's what the numbers mean. So you're looking for fives. You're looking for actually a four through a six. Right. Four through six, that's your normal range. When we start to see lower numbers or higher numbers, those are things we need to pay attention to. Now, did that diagnose that you have an issue? No. It just shows you that there's an imbalance in your cholesterol, or there's an imbalance in your your liver uh, enzymes, or there's a, an imbalance somewhere. You've got too much toxicity. The imbalance just educates you. Say, okay, all right. So I've got liver enzyme issues. First thing, have I got emotional issues? Am I angry at somebody? Am I holding a grudge against somebody? Mm -hmm. Or am I eating too much of the wrong foods? Am I eating too many fatty foods, fried foods? Am I drinking too much alcohol? All this, so the, it helps us understand, okay, I need to make some changes. Right. See, it's teaching us how to make better choices. That's all it is. So that's what the numbers are. So we look at your blood work. We look at uh, your allergies, your sensitivities to foods, the toxicities in your body, how our functions are working, our vitamin levels, uh, parasite load, fungal load, uh, uh, bacteria load. So it goes through there and it sees these numbers. Now, when you look at this, the first time you look at your report, you go, my word, I'm going to die today. Mm 
<laughs> I got so many nines or ones. <laughs> right. And that's not the case. Uh, what it's showing you is at that moment in time, at that moment, it's not in balance. Now, maybe you just ate a, a jelly donut, or maybe you just had a Coke, or maybe you just ate a, or a healthy meal. That uh, changes the frequencies. So putting it in your hand and being able to scan, let, let's scan before I eat, let's scan after I eat, see what, what, what did that my meal do for me today or do to me today. When you do a blood test or a urine test, it captured the chemistry of that moment. Now, if you were to take enough blood and, and urine and send that those samples to three different labs, so Quest, LabCorp, ARP, you'd get three entirely different reports back. You know why? Because the machines are different. The technicians are different. Maybe the reagents that they were using were a little close to being out of expiration or brand new. Mm -hmm. You would swear that those reports were from three different people. Same thing when people say, well, I'm going to scan right now. And they scan. And then they scan again, and there's differences. And they're saying, wow, that can't be. How can there then that shortage? Because we are always, we're like a running river. If I stick my finger in a river and pull it up, and then I stick it right back in, am I in the same water? No. The water's long gone. That's a very good uh, metaphor you got there. So, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's so true. We are always in a state of flux. Our energies are always moving, web, ebb and flow. We're moving. Mm -hmm. So what I encourage people to do is scan often and then look for trends. So if you see a certain, you're getting a certain thing that's coming up nines or eights or ones or twos consistently, then that's something you need to pay attention to. Right. But if you get to see a nine in the morning and then you scan again at night and that's now a seven or a six, then we knew it was just a transitory thing that happened. Mm. So, we, you know, it's not something we worry about. It's something we pay attention to. Right. And I, I think something you said is very important is that it's an education tool to, mm -hmm. to, to, to kind of look into your body more. Almost like, um, you know, it's not a way to um, get a diagnosis, you know, no. but, but, it, but it is a way to educate yourself to say, I need to make some adjustments in my life. And I think that's what the wellness journey people want to do is like, like, where do I start? I got to start with my emotions and mm -hmm. I think, I, and then another place is where am I at with my body without having to go get a blood test. Right. And so I think your, your technology does that. And, um, and then the, the part that really kind of warps my brain is there's optimization included in it. So it's not like, it's just like here, th it's almost like giving your report back saying, this is what's wrong with your body. You're actually saying, Hey, we're going to send frequencies to your body. That's right. And I, I think you, I think I might've heard you say that, if you keep doing the inner voice on a daily basis, it's almost like you're continuing to heal the body. And That's you right. might get a different scan a week from now due to the consistency of your inner voice. Is that, is that true? That's absolutely true. So this happened to me. I got up in the middle of the night one time to go to the bathroom. It's dark. I'm sleepy. I walk. And I stub my big toe on a step stool to get us in and out of the bed. Our bed's a little high. Okay, so that stub hurt. And that educated me in the morning. I'm moving that thing so I don't do it again. The scanner's the same way. You're going to stub your toe, so to speak, on something, and you're going to say, okay, I need to make a change. And that's all that the scanner's about is to educate you. Something in your life is in the way of you getting where you need to be. Move it out or change it or learn how to deal with it. And so that's what this is all about is to learn how your body responds. Your body, like when you wake up in the morning, you've got all of that. Hopefully, if you've got seven hours of sleep, your brain's been able to detox. If you get less than seven hours of sleep, it didn't get everything out. So we're now going to carry that forward today. So your brain detoxes while you sleep. And we learned this uh, just a little while ago uh, that says seven hours of sleep is what it takes for the brain to detox. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know that, but that was interesting. And so if you think about it, how important is the sleep we get? Very important. Very important. How important is it then what the, we, that we keep hydrated? Very important. So two really important things and you think are really simple to do. Get good sleep, drink plenty of good water. If we do just those two things well, 
the chances of you getting a degenerative disease is really minimized. The, the, you, you're going to function so much better. It's just like when you go to the gas station, if you put the cheapest gas in your car every time, pretty soon you're going to start to get that engine ping and you're going to lose performance. It. And then pretty soon you have to go in and have the heads cleaned and all the other stuff. But if you put in the higher quality gasoline, it burns at a better rate. The engine runs better. It runs cleaner. Same with oil. If you don't change the oil in your car, you're going to end up on the side of the road with your engine seized up. We need to treat our body. We take better care of our cars than we do our bodies. And that's a sad commentary. It really, really sad. is a sad commentary. Because this vehicle, we got one. And it's going to last. It needs to last this. Whatever the number of years are that we have to live. We can buy a new car. Can't buy a new body. You know, I agree. I, I think, you know, and it, it also in the good book, it talks about how our body is like a temple. You know? That's right. And, and, and unfortunately, we tend to taint and, and do things to the temple that um, it needs to serve us our whole lives, as you were saying. And I feel like one of the major reasons, too, is because we need everyone to express their gifts and talents that they work with their creator to provide out there. Mm -hmm. But what if you don't have the energy to do it? You know, that's something that could be holding you back, you know. That's right. Um, so I'm, I'm very interested, you know, because I, I love being this thing called, I don't know if you've heard of it before, but like a guinea pig, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, I, uh, you know, if you need to test something, I'm kind of the guy. In fact, when I was, I think, 12 years old, uh, 12 years old or maybe I was 14, I, I had really bad nausea. I was throwing up all night. Uh, and um, I think my, uh, I woke up in the morning just completely nude and uh, I had a bunch of needles on me. And I just look up and uh, my mom was doing acupuncture on me, wow. you know, and, she, and, and then she's like, go to bed. She's like, you'll be fine. You know, and I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just like, why are there needles on me? Why do I look like Hellraiser? You know? And, um, but um, what's interesting is that um, I really feel that I'm a good guinea pig and that I wanted to kind of let the audience know, Hey, why don't we do uh, an inner voice, you okay. know, and see, see kind of what comes out. And, and again, whatever you want to share that comes from it, so you obviously have the machine in your hand. And um, what do you want to guide people? Like, what would this look like? Like, what, what do we do? Okay, so it's probably hard for you to see on your screen right here, but we have Emmanuel's profile. Now, when you first get your scanner, you've got to set up your profile. In fact, it won't even function until you put your profile in. Right. And all we need is your profile is we're creating a electronic signature or a energy cell phone number that is to you and you only. And once that information goes in, and it takes a couple of minutes, we need your name, your your uh, your birth date, your age. We take a picture sometimes. These things are there to help generate an electronic signature that is unique to you, okay? And that's what we've done here. And once that's done, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, this will find you. Just like you take your cell phone, uh, to anywhere in the world where there's cell phone service, I can dial your number here and your phone will ring. I dial your number here and it's going to ring with you energetically. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to do an inner voice. So we click on the inner voice and we're going to do just the emotion part of it. You have That's two fine. options. You can do one that does your emotions and your basic chemistry. For me, I like to do just give me my emotions because from there I kind of know where to go. And so I'm going to uh, click on the mic. It'll count down as soon as it hits zero. Now, Emmanuel, you know this, but just for everybody else, we always want to start with I am. Did you know everybody in the world has the same name? I. Every one of us. That's our name. I. Right? Very good point. Okay. Okay. I am, and then we give your name. So I am Emmanuel, and I'm, and then you're going to just talk. By doing that, you acknowledge who you are, and what, regardless of your religious or spiritual beliefs, you just acknowledged who you are to that Creator. And then when you speak, you're speaking your truth, even if you're telling me a lie. Does that make sense? Makes sense, yeah. Okay, so. Go ahead and push your button and record. I'm Emmanuel Zavios. I'm 40 years old, turning 41 tomorrow. My birthday is July 28, 1981. Proud to be a Leo. Glad to be here. There we go. Okay, so all we needed was 10 seconds. Okay. 
Really, we needed less than that, but we got 10 seconds so we can really analyze it. And it gives okay. you right up at the top of your screen your voice print. Okay. Now, that shows us the frequencies that are out and, you know, the high ones and the low ones. And then if we hit reports, it'll bring up your reports and it will show you your. Well, this is a very comprehensive report. Yes. <laughs> to say the least. All right. So it shows you your voice print a little bit bigger. And then it will show you the three highest ones. Mm -hmm. It'll tell you the positive and the negative emotions when that particular octave is out of range. Okay? So it's not everything's bad. Right. Okay? But it just shows you, and then it'll tell you the physical things that it affects when it's out of balance. Then I'll give you the next one down, then the, the one closest to baseline that's high, and then it will give you your lowest one. And in each one of those reports, it will tell you when this emotion's on. It's not saying that you're either one, like on here, repetitive thinking versus creative thinking. You're not balanced there. Mm -hmm. We sometimes get in the rut. We just think the same thing over and over yeah. instead of being creative. That was the one. Another one, conditional love versus unconditional love. Mm -hmm. You know, we love people if you love me back. Mm -hmm. What we really need to be is more balanced. Now, we don't always want to be just unconditionally loving everybody right because to some people we want to love them but we from, have to a, from draw, afar we have to draw a line <laughs> right. right the other one is unacknowledged and versus self-validation mm -hmm. sometimes we feel like hey you know you don't you don't you didn't say hi to me today or yeah. you didn't say thank you because i took the garbage at her instead of just being comfortable with hey i, I did my thing and i'm i don't need it to anybody else i'll pat myself on the back right. we need to be balanced there because sometimes we need that recognition sure and sometimes we need to be able to just say, I'm good with just So it's, it's not going to be too much on one side, too no. much on the other side. Yeah, and and I think just... my wife would validate that those things you just <laughs> said are very, very true to my nature. So, um, But the thing is, is sometimes we swing. We swing back and forth between these. And the other one that was here was rigid beliefs versus being open to possibilities. And I find that particular one comes up with a lot of people who are – very devout religiously. Mm. They sometimes will fall into a rut that, oh, I can only think this way. Mm. And, you know, we were given a wonderful gift as human beings called free agency. Yeah. And we need to learn how to govern ourselves. Absolutely. Learn correct principles and then learn how to govern ourselves. Because otherwise, if we all did the exact same thing, we'd just be robots. robots. We wouldn't learn from anybody. So these emotions... None of these are saying that uh, you're suicidal or you're schizophrenic. It's not that type. It's just saying these are the balances emotionally that are out of range. And if they're not brought back into balance, then physical issues and mental issues can then take in and, and then recreate neural pathways that make us act and think in different ways that are unhealthy. So emotions are so, so critical. Um, we've spent more time and money on inner voice than probably any one of the other uh, modules. And it's continuing to evolve as we learn more. Um, it used to be that we had to have a lot of data on an individual to create a signature on you. Now, I, almost, I create 98% of your signature based on your first voice. Everything else we did in your profile is only about 2% of that. Because your voice tells us the truth of where your body is in the emotions. And then based on emotions, then we can extrapolate from that the physical. That's incredible. And I think what a lot of people are also wondering too, something that I found really interesting is that um, – being able to send frequencies to rooms, mm -hmm. being able to send it to a home. Right. I find that very, very interesting because one of the things is that, um, you know, in the future, I'd love to have like a nonprofit program where I want to see if they have acceptance for energy healing methods, right? Mm -hmm. But then to be able to send frequency to an orphanage or to send a certain frequencies to like a, a widow house, I think would be very powerful that the whole home can feel a certain way because they lack something there. Right. But um, tell me your, um, how, how would you explain to someone new, like there's frequencies coming to this room? Because I've experienced it for myself. She would send, I kid you not, she would just say, hey, just letting you know, I'm sending abundance frequencies to you. And I'd just be like, yeah, right, honey. Thank you so much, you know. 
And those two days became very abundant days. And I yeah. said, okay, what's, what, I attracted all these new clients. What what just happened? Right. So what what how would you explain that to someone that it's coming from the quantum field? I picture like this big huge machine that's vibrating like woo 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 woo, woo <laughs> and it's like targeting people's faces and you know, but that's not how it works. No, not really. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, is we manifest what we think. You know, we create our own environment by the way we think. If you're going to have a good day, you can have be rear-ended, you could have a flat tire and still go home and have a, say, I had a good day, I had a couple bumps today, but I had a good day because your frame of mind was, I'm going to have a good day today. And now, would it have been a little more difficult? Yeah, maybe so. But the point is, is we still have to create that. When a mother or even a father prays for a child, it doesn't matter where that child is. It could be in her arms. It could be on the other side of the world. That energy from parent to child, there is no bounds. There's no limit. It's just like there's no difference in time or space in that. When we pray, when now some people pray to uh, to a Christian God, some people pray to a Muslim God, some people pray to the universe, they're praying that affirmation that used to be called magic. Uh, Isaac Newton, what do we know Isaac Newton for? The apple fell on his head, gravity. Isaac Newton was known as a magician more than anything else, but we don't know that. Because back then, magician was what we would call today as a scientist. And so there's so much good information out there. If we really knew these people that were um, like Isaac Newton and um, Plato and all these people, they understood laws of nature that we're just now starting to to understand energy doesn't matter if it, and and tesla tesla proved this in fact our cell phone technology today started with tesla not with uh, anybody motorola didn't come up with tesla did um, energy is able to just free flow i'll give you an example there was a family that lived in southern california they rented a house there was one room in that house that nobody wanted to be in. When a guest came and they were given that room to sleep in, they didn't stay the next night. They had to leave. They couldn't stay in that room. Nobody wanted to be in that room. Uh, two years went by and they moved out of that house. And then they moved out. They were explaining to the owner of the house, the landlord of the house, what's up with that room? And they said, what do you mean what's wrong with the room? Well, nobody wants to stay in that room. Nobody wants to be in that room. Well, before you were there, they said, there was that home belonged to a drug dealer. And they murdered somebody in that particular bedroom. But that energy was still there. Now, in my mind, that soul was still stuck there that was murdered. So they started sending energy to that room. And within days, that room was no longer an issue. So... That's how you do it. Uh, you you take a picture of of some place, you load that into your scanner, and then you're able to send the frequencies. Just like um, your wife was able to send you frequencies of abundance and uh, and focus to where you were that day, and you had good days because that energy came. Now, if you were blocked to that energy, that energy would have hit and bounced off. See, we don't force any of these things. Uh, that's the one thing that we've we've worked really hard with the scanner is to make sure that the receiver, you have to literally answer that phone call mm-hmm. for that energy to come in. If you're closed off to it, it'll bounce right off. We're not, everything in the scanner is a gentle nudge. It's a subtle energy. You have the right to accept it or reject it. Now, it's not like your wife called you up and said, please answer my energetic call. Right. Your relationship with your wife is when that energy comes from her, you're going to accept that. So it's not like this is something where you could send bad energy to anybody. It won't work. It just won't work. But you can send good energies and healing energies and energies of love and kindness to anybody. Now, whether they want to accept them, that's up to them. Mm-hmm. That's really interesting. Um, and what do you think would be the, the number one reason why someone would reject something that's positive? Is it because they're, because I, I feel, for example, when I meet with clients, 
um, I've noticed that they just need the faith of a mustard seed to get some really good results. Now, you may people may call it placebo, or whatever, but but if I'm working on their children, if I'm working on their dog, there's no placebo effect because I don't speak dog or baby. Mm-mm. But but what's interesting is that um, I would always catch the man who's because first you know how it is, men are. We don't like to express our emotions too much. It's more yeah, yeah. The, the the feminine energy is rising in the earth. We're the dumber. I, we're the dumber species. We're the slower ones. Yeah. yeah. So I, I get that. But one of the things that I notice is that um, the guy says, "Do you can you still work on me if I don't really believe in what you're doing?" And I and I would tell this my comeback. I would say, "If you didn't believe what I was doing, you wouldn't show up to the appointment." Yeah. So there is just a little bit that I can work with, and that's all I need. And then I would help out their ankle, and their ankle pain would go away. And then all you know? of a sudden they open up. Yeah, they just yeah. if you can lower a man's pain down, they become your best friend the next day. It's just yeah. how it works. Yeah. Um, but what I find very interesting, though, is um, kind of on, on the next level, um, again, when Jessica came, I want to tell you a little story, is that um, Jessica, she was inspired to somehow – follow what you do um, because we, she got certified in what I do emotion code body code but she started getting this strong premonition she's like something's coming my way has something to do with energy and stuff but I, I don't know what it is and as soon as she found out about soul she's like this is it and she just ran with it but it was it was like coming her way like it was it was like those certifications are cutie manual but there's a higher calling coming you know my way um, but I was just curious um Whenever she would come home, she would show me something new. She'd say, look what it can do now. And I'm like, whoa. And I'm like, and next week we might even have something else new that it can do. And I was just mind blown that there was so many cool weeks where new things would come up. Um, But the one that kind of was interesting was the programming of, let's say, like sugar pellets. Right. Right, right. So so it's interesting. You put it on the phone and maybe you can kind of sort of demonstrate it. So what you're doing is you're, from what I know, is extracting energy from a certain material, but then you're infusing it with something else, right? Is, am, I, am I correct with that or something close okay, to that? Okay, so we have the ability to do a couple things. If I wanted to take uh, an herb uh, or a spice and put it into some sugar pills, I can do that by a process called copy. And so I'd put, so I'll just come up here and put copy on here. So what I want to, so if you can see the screen, whatever I want to copy, I'd put on this lower half. And what I want to put it into, that energy, it would be on on this part here. And once I've got all that set, I just hit start, and then it captures the frequency that's here and moves it to here. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a big stretch for a lot of people. Come on, this looks like voodoo to me. Yeah. Um, and I understand and appreciate that 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 skepticism, and I think it's a healthy skepticism. Mm-hmm. But I want you to think about this: you walk into a room full of people, and everybody's happy and jovial, and you feel immediately at home. You feel at peace. Everybody, oh, well, hi, Emmanuel. You hug, you, and you feel you feel like you could be there the rest of the evening. Mm-hmm. You walk into another room, and maybe there's quarreling going on, or there's some. Uh, really hard music or and it's like I got to get out of here and what was the difference it was just the energies and that energy you picked up on that energy um, you said a minute ago how, do you, how, how did she know or she knew something was coming there's that old phrase when the student is ready the teacher appears mm-hmm. we're always seeking we may not be consciously aware of what we're seeking but we're seeking things mm-hmm. and sometimes we get into a rut where we're seeking not good things. Mm-hmm. We're negative. We want people's pity. We want people's attention. And so we'll do things that will cause that type of energy to come to us. So when you asked a minute ago, um, is there a, can you can they get this? How how do they reject it when it comes? Well, they just they put up that wall mm-hmm. because I like this. I like this negative attention I'm getting because you're paying me attention. Mm-hmm. When that wall goes away, now they become open to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like when you talked a little bit about the cords. Mm-hmm. You know, we're always reaching out because we, as humans, we want, we need the touch, whether it's a physical touch or an emotional touch. We need to be recognized. We need, and and a lot of us need to feel needed, and we want to give. So those things are always there. So if we're keeping our head in the right place, we're going to be 
the student that's always ready for the teachers as the teachers come. So homeopathic medicines. Now, most of the people that are watching this podcast probably don't need to be convinced of energy or energy medicines. But that's how homeopathic medicine is made. Mm -hmm. They take a sample of something and they dilute it down so many times to where if you were to do analysis, there's nothing in there of the original. Mm -hmm. But the energy is. And they'll say, you know, the, the more dilute that is, the more powerful it is. And I don't know if that's actual true. I just know that homeopathic is an energy um, medicine or an energy substance sub, uh, um, thing that we can take into our body and our body can generate with it. When you eat food, the food goes through a breakdown of a chemical breakdown and it ends up being just energy. Mm-hmm. That's what our body operates on. It doesn't operate on meat and potatoes. It operates on the energy from that food. Right. And if it's good energy, we get we work better. And if it's not good energy, then we break it down. Yeah, and it, it kind of reminds me of um, Missouri Moto's work. You know, the, yes, yes, like, because you know he he basically noticed that water can be programmed by by words and by music. You know, yes. so so which is all frequency. Words yes. and music are both frequency. And um, I love the story of the. Uh, um, the war, there was a war in a certain lake, um, around that certain lake, and, and people came around and prayed, and they both, they took two samples of it, and um, the the water changed um, because of the prayer. Yes. And so, and so that, I think when you, when you talk about these, like, imprinting and things like that, it may also come down to as simple as blessing of food and changing the molecular structure of the food by just saying words to it, saying that the intent of this word. So I think people, it's almost like we're more powerful than we think. And we have to be very careful. My One of my friends told me, he said, uh, um, word is like spirit. It's like always seeking flesh, you know? And, so I, and, and, I, and I really feel like that's true. We have to be careful what we say because we will manifest it. It's always seeking for it. That's right. Um, uh, the example he used was... Uh, um, you know, Jesus, when he got rid of the evil spirits from this man who was hurting himself and mutilating himself, um, the first place that these these evil spirits went to were the pigs. That's right. Because they're so desperate for the flesh. That's They'd right. rather be in flesh than in no flesh at all. That's right. And then, of course, the, the pigs drowned and then everyone was mad at Jesus, you know. But yeah. but Jesus was saving a person, so he yes. has bigger things to take care of. Right. But um, I think we, we have to... I think I just wish people knew how powerful they really were. You know, and this goes way back even to the time of uh, Moses. Uh, the Jews had their little headbands and they mm-hmm. had little scroll scroll canisters on there. The and phylacteries. Would, yes, yeah, yeah. and they would write their, their prayer, roll it up, put it in, and they mm-hmm. so their prayers are with them all day. Right. And But, you know, if you think about it, the affirmations are nothing more than in fact, the affirmations used to be called magic spells mm-hmm. because you were sending something. An affirmation is a powerful thing. When we say negative things to us, that's a that's a horrible thing to do, um, especially when we say horrible things to people we love. And, and we always, well, oh, I'm so sorry I did that, but we should have never done it in the first place because that energy, that power is so powerful. The energy behind love and hate is the exact same energy. It's just the intention of that energy that changes it from either love or hate. There is no good energy or bad energy. It's the intention that's attached to that energy that makes good or bad. The electricity that runs these lights and everything that we're doing here is the same electricity that kills people in an electric chair. The difference is, is what was the intention of that electricity? What's that being used for? So keeping our mind and our thoughts and our hearts clean and 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 of of love is so 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 uncritical. What are the two most important commandments? And not only did Christ eat it, but uh, so did Muhammad. Love. We gotta love God, and we gotta love each other the the same way we want to be loved. Those two commandments. If that's really the only two commandments you really need, you wouldn't break any of the other commandments if you kept those two. Yeah, those are like the foundational yeah, ones. Yeah, the it. cornerstone. That's it. Yeah, and I and I feel like um, for me. Um, Opening, I think opening up people's minds to how much they could arrange their life for better if they look into these scans, um, how much they can s- take care of themselves by sending binaural beats meditation to themselves. It's a form of um, 
uh, self-love that I feel like is lacking here uh, in the world. I feel, I feel, um, you know, now this new word is coming out and it was like, you know, self-care and things like that, but we should have been doing that long time ago. Mm. And, and, um, and that's why, you know, my, my mother used to appreciate the Europeans, you know, and she says, they're always ahead of us, you know, and she's like, you gotta, when you give someone water, make sure that you send the good intentions with the water and it that's matters right. the water they drink. And I was like, what mom, you're that when I was a little kid, that was a little too far for me. Yeah. But now I look at it, I'm like, she was right. The doctor who wants you to get better, um, changes. And she told me, she says, the difference between me and the other doctors in Kaiser is that I don't see my, my patient as a sick person. I see that as just people that are getting better. That's, That's all. right. And because of that, so they get good. better. So, smart. you know, yeah, it's just a different way of looking at people and, and the people change by the way you look at them, you know? And so, um, let me ask you this with the, um, I'd love to kind of hear maybe three, what are your top three stories of just like mind blowing stories of like, Things that you've seen that the AO scan has done or how it's helped people, like what are three kind of ones that really stand out to you that this is, a, I love the number three, so sorry if I keep using three, <laughs> uh, but it's a very powerful number three. It's very powerful. Uh, but, um, I don't know if it's my favorites, but it's because we get them all the time. But I'll tell you some of the some of the more recent ones. We had uh, someone send in a, um, a request of, I've had COVID, I've lost my sense of smell and taste. And I need these to function. So uh, any ideas? And somebody sent her a little playlist, put it in her scanner, played it. The next morning, her scent and smell came back. And she wrote back, this is the most amazing gift ever. Um, that was one that just came in. We had another one that just happened recently um, where a psychologist was looking at this and her husband was believing in it wanted to really work with this but she just couldn't wrap her head around this whole energy thing and so basically we were challenged to scan him and so we did and it came up and it said that there was two injuries in his brain and it was affecting his left and, and left ear and right uh, right eye and that right there changed her entire attitude from skepticism to disbelief but I got to have this because he had just had a head injury a couple months ago and it affected his eye and his left ear. And there was no way anybody could have known that. And so those are the types of things that are really amazing. We've seen some incredible stories from people that will have got their scanner and they were working with it. We've got uh, a mother that has um, an 18 year old boy with severe autism and he can't speak put words together, he could he just you know, mumble and um, she puts in her voice on him and he calms right down. Uh, she does inner voice with him every single day and he's getting better and better and better. And yet in 18 years, none of the therapies they did could get him to where he wasn't angry. Mm -hmm. So these are the types of things that make it um, worth getting up every day to see, you know, those types of things. Because we get them every day. People writing in and saying, this is what's happened to me. To say I've got three favorites, I don't know if I have three favorites. I just have lots of great things coming through the door that are amazing. Yeah, and, and it it's so... Um I don't think there's a better feeling than when someone goes from point A to point B. And sometimes I feel like we're always concerned about the why. Like, how did this happen, you know? But... Um, I know um, Bob Bob Proctor would once say, you know, mm -hmm. he said, uh, you know, we don't even know how electricity works, but we use it all the time. You know, yeah. it's just like we see the benefits of electricity all the time. We use it every day, but most of us don't even know what it is. Like That's you know, right. and um, and I feel like um, there's a um, author, um, Arthur, Arthur Schop Schopenhauer. Uh, you know, he, he was a German businessman. You know, he said something really interesting, and I feel like this is what the AO scan is in some ways. Okay, but um, but he said something that like truth goes through like three stages. You know, it's 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 you know ridiculed at first. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, it's violently opposed, not just opposed, and then it be, it becomes self evident. Mm -hmm. And I th and I think everything that's a new idea has to go through these stages. Yeah, so true. And I f and and what they call it is the tipping point. Uh, where two people in a house say, I have that. It's like, you don't have that? It's like, oh, I just got that just recently too. When two people come together, it's like this explosion happens where the 85% right. of society becomes aware of it. It's like the conscious awareness awakens to it. 
I will say it on this podcast that the AO scan is one of those things that it will be, there will come a tipping point where people will say, you don't have that. It's like, that's how I always check on my health or that's how I maintain my health. And then everyone will just have it. It'll just be a common thing. Yeah. What, are, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I know, I know you probably think about that. And it, it, well, it, from, from your lips to God's ears, um, <laughs> that is what we hope. We hope because it, what we're doing is we're empowering people to take care of themselves. We're empowering people to have the ability to, one, trust themselves, to learn how to listen to themselves, to heal themselves and their family. This is about the most powerful gift. Think about it. You could be the richest person in the world, but if you're sick, it's worthless to you. Your health is so important, and not just your physical health, but your emotional health. You know, you can be really healthy, but a really horrible person, person. to people. Yeah. That you're not, it's not good either. So the AO scan helps us on all of those levels. And, you know, the AO scan isn't free. They, they pay a monthly free to have that. And that's a concern. That's always been a concern to us is how do we make it to where the average family can afford it? Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's lots of ways. Well, can you, your whole family's using it? Can you decide what supplements you're going to use? Can you make your own medicines with it? Um, but for me, I would get rid of my cable subscriptions before I would get rid of my scanner mm -hmm. because that's more important to me, you know, than watching a movie or having some entertainment to be able to check and see how I'm at. My my wife, we were in, in uh, Germany just a, a few months ago, and she we were walking down the stairs to the subway, and she missed the last step, and she twisted her ankle. We thought she had twisted her ankle. So we got our way back to the ho the hotel, and her her foot swelling up, and the pain was excruciating. Mm -hmm. And right next to the, our hotel was a hospital, a, little, a small hospital. So at nine o'clock that night, I says, "Let's run over to the hospital and see." And so we didn't have a wheelchair, so we just took the the chair in the office or in the in the hotel room that has the wheels on it. And she sat in that. And as I'm sitting here in the chair, I says, why don't we scan first? Let's just see what it is. And so we did a scan on her, on her, on her left ankle and foot. And it showed, um, two, uh, two bones that had nines in them, which are really bad numbers and some ligaments and muscles. And, and I says, yeah, this, this may be more than a sprain. And so I wheel her through the hotel lobby, all the way out the door, down the driveway into the hospital. And we wait four and a half hours in this emergency room for someone to come out and see her. They finally get her in and they x-ray her. And she had a compound fracture in her foot and two torn ligaments. And so I set up a playlist on the Cephi that played these frequencies for those issues. And we let it play all night long. And the next morning, her swelling was down, and she had almost no pain. So cool. we get in our car, and we're driving to uh, Austria the next day. And uh, when we get to the new hotel, we get all situated. We're not paying attention. We don't sit on that. We don't turn the scanner on. Next morning, swelling's back, pain's back. So we re remembered, okay, we've got to turn that back on. The rest of the—we had five more days in Europe before we came home. Those next five days, we had absolutely had virtually no pain unless she's tried to walk on it, and the swelling was almost normal. And so my point is, this was a lifesaver for us mm -hmm. in this trip, and well, for her particularly. But it's real; the energy is real. Our bodies are energy beings, and when we feed the energy, the right energy, it responds well. The um, <clears throat> I never shared this with you, but. My wife had some some serious digestive issues, and um, we had uh, um, her sponsor sent some frequencies to her, and it was within maybe three minutes. Yeah, it it helped out her digestive system, and then our son also had colic issues as well, oh, wow. and also helped with him as well. For me, one of my favorite ones is I um I had we had a client that um, unfortunately she had boiling water go to her daughter and it Ooh. just went all over her face. Her eye oh, was hugely dear. bruised. It was like, and I, I kid you not, I only did one body coat session on her and she just kept sending frequencies to her. And like literally within a few days, it's like, it was like, it was like magic. There were like four photos and she, the lady was so impressed. She took four photos of before and after and how fast it was. 
She was shocked. Yeah. And so I'm just like, how do you put a price on that with your baby that you just scolded with, with this boiling water, right. you know, and typically how long would it take? And she couldn't, she literally could not see her eyes were sealed shut, Oh, geez. you know? And, um, but just how fast she recruited, she looks like a normal girl now, you know, yeah. what a blessing. but, um, but yeah, I just, I'm so mind blown by this. Um, I was going to share with you. Um, well, actually I would like to ask you about this little device. It's, it's white and pink and maybe to the right of you. Um, but, um, I know we had to bring this up because my wife's like, can you please let him share about this in an interesting instrument that I know that Solex, um, is now adding new and new products. And, and I know that that from history of me being in direct sales, I've noticed that, that that's kind of the success of a company is they keep bringing out new high vibrational products that continue your wellness journey. So when I saw this, I was just, would love to hear your, your view on this. Okay, so the inner vo- or the um, illuminator is what we call it, the inner illuminator. It's a device that has three uh, red diodes in it. Now, these are laser diodes. These are not LEDs. And so you have to be careful. Now, right now, I can aim it at you or my eye. It's not going to hurt me. Mm-hmm. But as soon as I put, put it against my skin, let me get it all the way on there, that will become... Darker and dark, brighter and brighter. You see how yep. it goes through. Right through, yeah. Now, when when it's at that point, uh, it's able to penetrate, you know, almost um, half a centimeter into the skin, into the tissue. Mm-hmm. So when we're dealing with that on the skin around the our wrinkles, mm-hmm. or it drives nutrient into the skin and it brings collagen to the surface of the skin. Mm. Now, what this was developed for wasn't developed for beauty. It was developed for um, a woman to be able to diagnose her breast to see if the breast was healthy. Mm. They could It would actually illuminate, and they could see if there were nodules or tumors in there with this. And then they could use it to help break those things up. Mm. That's what it was developed for. But the illuminator, because the the light that we use in here is 660 nanometer, it'll penetrate. So it's wonderful for pain. If you've got uh, pain in your in your elbow or in your in your knee or your wrist, by just putting that on and letting it uh, do its, you're stimulating all of the cells in that area, and you're bringing the nutrient up to where it needs to be to bring the healing into where it's at. Wow. So now, one thing that you maybe didn't know, you can put this into your Cephi, and you can send the frequencies to here so that when you're doing the light, you're also sending it the frequencies with the light, and the light drives the frequencies in even more. I did not know that. Yeah, so that's another another thing that you can do with the illuminator is it allows you to take the frequencies not just through the energy, but to actually use the light to help drive it in. And, and I... In, in my work that I do, um, I know that there was a story of um, Dr. Brad's daughter having a headache. And um, you can energetically send nutrients to someone with mm-hmm. the, with your intention. But it's almost like a quick little shot. It's not right. like, you know, then you have to muscle test to see, do you need the physical support? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, she needed manganese for her migraine. And so she, he just sent it to her. And then all of a sudden, no headache, you know, just mm-hmm. went away. But what I found interesting about also, I want to share this one thing about the the power of the AO scan is that um, I feel like when we go into a nutritional store, there's vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin C, you know, and 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 you go in there and you think you're a doctor and you're like, I'm going to go in here and I think I need some vitamin K and I'm just going to take as much dosage as I want because it's one tablet, so I think I should just take one. But you don't really know how much milligrams you really need and things no. like that. So it's almost like we're doing a lot of guesswork when your body's saying, no, I'm actually – malnourished here and I need more nourishment here. Jess showed me one time, she says, look, it says I need some of this supplement and this supplement today. Yesterday I didn't, right. but today. So explain that because a lot of people okay. are like, are, are curious, like how do I, um, when it comes to supplements, do I take it every day? And it seems like this is trying to help you take the guesswork out. It does. Okay. So everything has its own frequency. And so what we're doing, um, you're taking your supplements and you have the ability on your phone or on your device to capture the frequency of that. So you would type in, okay, uh, 
Nature Sunshine, Vitamin C, 500 milligrams, mm -hmm. and then you would scan it, and in five seconds it will capture that frequency, and it puts it in a database. So all the supplements, the foods um, that you do, all of those things that you can load into here, and then you can do a morning scan or an afternoon scan and say, what do I need today? And it will go through your library. Now, it's not going to look at something that's not in here. Right. So you got to put it in first. Once it's in, it'll tell you what you need. Mm -hmm. We had one testimonial from a couple that said, um, in just supplement savings alone, I'm saving more than 150 a month between mm -hmm. my wife and I. And, and that's so true. In Europe, they, they laugh and they say that Americans have the most expensive urine in the world because we take so much right. of the supplements that we don't need. Now, marketing tells us one a day, take it every day, or take two a day, or we take three of those a day. Your body, if you ate a good meal and you got a good night's sleep, you may not need all of that the next day. So to scan and say, okay, what do I, what's my body frequency saying? I'm, it'll go through that library and say, okay, you need some of this and this and this. And that is an amazing And it's aspect. interesting because I know there's so many different people. Let's say like you, um, you know, work for a, a, a specific essential oil company. Mm -hmm. And they have a different formula, maybe mm -hmm. mixed with their lavender. Mm -hmm. It's amazing that you can program that exact formula from that company in there, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and it kind of like just adds an extra yes. nudge to you if you yeah. need it. If but if, we, you, do, if yeah. you don't need it, yeah. it doesn't recommend it. That's right. That's that's to me is very fascinating. Well, and the thing is, is we do. We waste a lot of money on things that we don't necessarily need all the time. And so to know, yep, I do need that today, and you're going to take it. But if I don't need it today, I'm not going to waste it, and I'm and I'm not going to have my body have to deal with it and cope with it. So, like I said, and the, the AO scan will continue to add more of these types of functions to where it, if I leave my house and I left it at home, I will turn around and go back and grab it. That's how important it is that I have my scanner with me all the time. So I uh, we we call it our American Express card. Like we just don't leave home without it. <laughs> you Seriously, no. When we go on vacation, we're yeah. just like you bring the AO scan. Like we that's, yes, we just that don't. So cool. It's so strange to leave it at home. You know, yeah. especially because if we're doing driving, and our baby's crying in the back, we're like playlist Z Z Z sleep. Yeah, he, he needs that <laughs> right about now, and it works. Like yes. he just falls asleep right there. Like, All right, well that you know, um, something I also do for a lot of parents who they're, um, I think there's a lot of um, there's a lot of um, I think the children that are coming in this society right now are the most spiritual children uh, ever in the history. I think they've yeah. they've 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 learned so much in the pre-existence to come here to be able to be powerful people. But then they can also be the most attacked, you know, in many different ways. Um, TikTok is getting their, uh, like, like you know, they're getting bad influences from TikTok yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. Getting, but YouTube is kind of infiltrating them. Social media, they've been on more phones than we've been with on our own phones. That's right. And so, um, and parents, I guess the average American, 15 minutes is how much we spend time with our kids. So we have this very limited time to like assist our children, I think. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, when when our child is going through, they're mad or they're sad. Um, Jack Canfield teaches. He says, "Don't send a kid to the room and say what bad wrong thing did you do. Think about it, because then they're just con yeah, doing a congruent right. negative cycle." Right. He says, "Think about how you could have done it right, and then stay in the room." You know, but then we also put him with the headphones and say, "Do your inner voice right now as you're in the state of being mad." And I tell you, our kids flip 180 as soon yeah. as they hear their inner voice and then and they come out just more emotionally stable and they're ready to talk now like you know like hey let's talk about what just happened way more pliable yep than how it was 15 minutes ago and the only thing that changed was the frequency balances exactly and, and i just feel like if, if there's a parent out there who like oh my child struggles with you know um with anger or you know being stubborn or whatever it's like you get them on a daily meditation or a code red sos um inner voice mm -hmm. i think in a month they're going to be like wow my child has changed left around you've probably yeah. heard, you've probably seen this yep time and time after again you know you, you talk about it uh, earlier you talked about with with pets because you don't speak pet or baby um, Fourth of July just passed a little while ago, and we had uh, a couple people. It wasn't just one. We had a couple people respond and say, "My dog freaks out at fireworks." And so what we did is we took our Sefi, we brought up his profile, and we set up calm, peace, and all these things in right. the playlist, and we let that play. And he just laid in his bed, and hardly was a, a 
bothered by the fireworks at all. And that was more than one person. I was in two or three people had sent that in. These are, you're not, you can't tell them, oh, be calm. Yeah, right. You know, right. it just happened. And he would lay there. Uh, we've had other people who will take and put the inner voice frequencies on and put it down on the couch and the cat or dog will go over and sit and lay right next to it because of the frequencies. Mm -hmm. They understand frequencies far more than we ever will. Mm -hmm. But it's, yeah, the frequencies are amazing. Yeah. Um, so just to, first of all, um, I'm just so grateful that you had the time to come down here because uh, in my personal opinion, this technology, again, needs to be more readily to people. Um, just, I'm trying to remember what movie it was. I think it was the movie Dune, which was a really good science fiction. I'm kind mm -hmm. of a science fiction guy. Um, but I just remember that they, they called in like a guy to kind of look after the main character, like some wellness guy came in and just started doing tests on him. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, most of us don't have a wellness doctor to come like out of a closet and just check on you and then you go, you know, but I feel like this is this, this wellness, um, uh, wellness machine that you have in your hand that scans you and looks over you and lets you know this is where you're at. And if you'd make a couple of changes, this is where you could be. Yep. And if you're consistent, you'll see the changes. And then if, you know, if there are issues that are like nines and nines and nines and there's problems, why not use the first line of defense, which could be a wellness doctor first, right? right, right? right. Because then what, because what most people don't know is, let, let me see the alternative. The alternative would be a doctor who they're trained to give you prescriptions because it benefits them financially and unfortunately it's almost like then you go into this little merry-go-round where now That's you right. have liver problems mm -hmm. and now you, you have fatigue and then you have to keep coming back you know yeah. and i think what you're doing is we're at, we have to target the real core imbalance and typically what it is is it needs to be scanned it needs yeah. to be you know it's a it's a frequency that's not it's misaligned you know yeah. um so i just want to if you want to share anything to those who are listening and just say you know what are your final words or what would you say to people that are like Wow, this machine looks amazing. Um, I mean, I don't know why I don't have it yet. Um, what What are your thoughts about the 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 world we live in now is changing from the world of the of information to the the generation of of intuition? I think we're kind of shifting our our thoughts here. Um, what would you tell that person who's like, I really want to take my life to the next level, and this machine looks like it could be a part of it? What would you tell that person? Okay, so before I go into that, let me just say we right now are living in a state of fear. Take a look. I mean, there's so much divisiveness in not just our country, but in the whole world. And we're, we're making decisions based on fear. We're making decisions based on, am I going to be able to buy the next tank of gas? Am I going to be able to buy food? What I'm going to say to you is the thing that is absolutely most important to you is your health. Not just your physical health, but your emotional health as well. And if this resonates with you as you're hearing us talk, then act on that. If this does not resonate with you right now, then there's a reason why you shouldn't have it. But if it resonates, if you feel that this is where you should go, then run, don't walk. Trust yourselves. I would never force anybody or try to encourage somebody to buy something that they're not ready for. Um, just like when you're getting ready to marry somebody. You date, you get to know, you learn, you learn how you are going to respond with each other. And then you pop the questions and then you work out those things out. And this is the same type of thing. This is, in my mind, very much like a marriage because this is something that you're going to use on a daily basis. If you're going to buy this and just use it every once in a while, you're wasting your money. You buy this. I get up every morning. I do my shower. I get my teeth brushed. I sit in my chair. I do my scan. Then I get dressed and I go to work. That's how this is how important this is to me because I know that if I do this, my days are better, my health is better. The days that I do miss, which are very seldom, I do not have great days. So if you're hearing this and this makes sense to you, I would reach out to somebody that has one and have them do a scan. Have them do a scan. In fact, anybody that wants to try it, I will give them an alpha three pass to let them have three days to try it on their own. That's great. Yeah. I, I think when it comes to like information, once you experience something, it becomes yeah. real. Yes. And and I think that's what, um, you know, uh, I once told someone and uh, I don't think he, he believed in, in God, but I was telling him, I said, religion was never meant to be convinced. It was meant to be experienced. Yes. Yeah. And then that's when it makes it real. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it's like, I almost like, 
give them a hug when they say they're skeptical. I'm like, yeah, hey, because we're brothers. I, I was skeptical too. As long as you said that, uh, you said something earlier, healthy skepticism, which yes. means you're willing to be wrong and right. to and to find the breadcrumbs that that lead to truth. Now, if you're the unhealthy skepticism, that means that you're just a pessimist. That's that's mm-hmm. different. We're not those people wouldn't benefit from this because they'll find everything wrong with it. You know, without skepticism, we never learn. We never learn anything. We would true. stay within that little simple path. Right. Um, so there's a balance, like in anything else. A healthy skepticism helps us learn the things that we haven't quite learned yet. Mm-hmm. And not everything that we, we, we go after is going to be good. And so that skepticism protects us. But like you said, we have to be open enough to at least ask the questions mm-hmm. and then listen to the answers. And, and for those of you who are entering into energy, the energy healing world, I'll, I'll say this, and maybe you agree with me, is um, I remember one time I, I was doing this landmark program, and I remember it said something like, 10% is what we know we know. You know, we know, your, we know our name, we know our social, we know where we live. 10% is what we know we don't know. I don't know brain surgery, mm-hmm. you know. 80% is what we don't know we don't know. That's and un- right. unless, you don't, unless you don't jump into that pool, you'll never master your life. That's right. and, and when I looked into to energy medicine, when I look into technologies like these, I start noticing that, man, there's a lot of stuff I don't know I don't know. And it, may, it, it will harm me in the future. If you don't know that your body is made out of atoms and electrons and that you can manipulate it, whatever, it will harm me. And ignorance yes. is, is not peace. You will not find peace in ignorance. It's it's knowledge. You need the knowledge, knowledge. and then you need to apply the knowledge. That's right. So, um, yeah, I'm just very grateful for you coming down and, and so thankful for your time. And uh, I always end the podcast saying this, as I say, um, you know, the world has a false notion where I'll take care of you if you take care of me. But if we just take care of ourselves, then we can change our home, we can change our relationships, we can change the city, we can change the country, we can eventually change the world. So true. So um, thank you for being here. Thank you.